Welcome back. As many of you know, during the Super Bowl this past week, Comcast Tucson feed was interrupted for 10 seconds by an ad for the rival cable provider, Cox. Oh, whoa, ho, Cage. Whoa. That's not at all what happened. Uh, the interrupted feed was not an advertisement for anything but gratuitous nudity. But I must say, it worked, as gratuitous nudity sales are up 250% since the Super Bowl. And it also leads us to our newest segment with our newest correspondent, Drew Cheddar. Thanks, Ross. A lot has happened in sports since my last report. Um, uh, Drew, this is your first report. Exactly, Ross. So I have a lot to cover. Don't interrupt me. Ever. Let's start with the biggest news of the week, the Super Bowl. The Arizona Cardinals, in their first ever Super Bowl appearance, lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers last week, 27-23. A rough loss by any means, but this comes as a great relief to bandwagon fans who are exhausted from pretending to have always liked the Cardinals. Now they're free to go back to pretending to like any number of winning teams. My advice? 1972 Miami Dolphins. Uh, Drew, isn't it a bit hard to cheer for a team that existed 37 years ago? Forgive him, humble fans, as he has no idea the pressures of being a bandwagon fan. My coworker knows not the shame that takes place from, from hopping on the wrong bandwagon. My brilliant theory, Ross, stems from the idea that you can't be wrong about jumping on a team's bandwagon if you know that they are going to be the best football team in the history of football. A bandwagoner's dream, or as we call it, Garden of Greasy. In other news, the Arizona Wildcats won their first bowl game since 1993. The Wildcats defeated the notoriously Mormon BYU Cougars in the Las Vegas Bowl, to which I say, duh. I mean, it comes down to who wants it more. But, uh, Drew, the BYU Cougars were ranked going into the game. Who's to say that they didn't want it as much as we did? My God, Ross. It's as if you were raised by wolves. Interrupting wolves. But to answer your question, it was the Las Vegas Bowl, like a school full of Mormons would know what to do with it. In Wildcat basketball news, Arizona forward Chase Buttinger has shown tremendous improvement over the past couple of games. Why is this? Well, I seem to recall Chase had his face purposefully stepped on by University of Houston guard Aubrey Coleman. Oh, come on, Drew. Is there really a correlation between the two events? Please, Ross. It's as clear-cut as my abs and as hairless as my nipples. What does that even mean? Well, it hurt, and I wanted people to know the effort I put into it. Putting my theory into effect, I set out to try and amp up the rest of the team through similar means. I punched Nick Wise in the crotch, knifed Jamel Horn in the kidneys, and... <laughs> these are David Baga's eyeballs. Hmm. Whoa, Drew, is that where that giant handprint came from? Oh, uh. Not exactly, Ross. When I tried to leave my footprint on Jordan Hill's face, I ended up getting into a bit of a tiff with his five-year-old son. You got your ass kicked by a five-year-old? Well, he is six foot four. Drew Cheddar, everybody. We'll be right back. 